Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful planet of ours. This is Mark Leinhart, the Intuitive Prospector, here for another Metaphysical Mocha Monday. He's got some top fans joining in. Uh, hi, Wendy. Hi, Abigail. Hi, Paula. Hi, Karen. Uh, top fan, Tina. How you doing, Victoria? Jeanette, how you guys doing? Uh, so just want to uh, give a second just to share out. Uh, let's see here if I can do this. So um, good morning to all of you. Grab your coffee, grab your tea. Let's get into the magic of the moment of Monday morning. Today we're going to be talking about intuition, the language of your soul, and I'm going to give you some pointers to help you out so you can start to identify what your intuition even looks like if you don't even know what that looks like. So if you're new to the page, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and turn the comments off now. Uh, if you guys would be so kind to share out, I would greatly appreciate it. Share to a page where somebody might benefit from hearing uh, today's inspiring message. Uh, Metaphysical Mocha Mondays is here almost every Monday starting at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's an inspirational show with inspirational messages for the week ahead. And if you stick around uh, at 8.30, we'll have the prospecting Q&A after show, which uh, immediately... Um, so how it works is this show will finish at 8.30. It will premiere over on my YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, please do so. I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the um, description field. If you want to get on my playlist, um, which is called Soul Adventures Playlist, and it is cool because um, there are over 200 videos of not only just Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, but four seasons of Inspired Living Radio. It's my podcast, radio show, internet show uh, that it, we've covered amazing topics, awesome guests uh, from all around the world, guests, people that you know and people that you may not have heard of that are up and coming. Uh, so I've gone ahead and, and put that playlist uh, link in the uh, description field, and you can also click on the video um, description field of this video to get that um, uh, link to the YouTube video. So this morning, we're going to be talking about intuition. It's something that I teach on. It's something that um, uh, is important. And it's, you know, one of the things that comes to mind is um, what Albert Einstein uh, talked about. And he talked about, if I can get my web browser open, he talked about the intuitive mind. And the intuitive mind being a sacred gift and the rational mind being its faithful servant. So just take a second for that. The intuitive mind, that intuition, the right side, the, the, the right side of the brain, which is about... Um, learning and creativity and imagination and then the left side of the hemisphere the brain uh, is that more rational analytical um, thinking memory speech that all goes on the left side of the, the the brain and the only reason I know about this is because my journey of watching my older brother uh, be diagnosed with terminal brain cancer but then sitting down with the brain surgeons and understanding you know how how his brain was being impacted and learning a lot about the brain um, and so I, in my own journey, realized that the brain is like a supercomputer up here. It sits on top of this. That's why we call these your temples. And so your intuition is that intuitive mind, that, that maybe that whisper of the heart that you hear, that God spark. And so Albert Einstein reminds us that the intuitive mind is really the sacred gift, and the rational mind, this side of the brain, is the faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. So this morning, I'm here to remind you of that gift. And we're going to be talking about some things to look for on your intuition. If you are wanting to develop your intuition, if you want to go deeper uh, in your intuitive path. Uh, so as we're doing that, if you guys could... Um, uh, just uh, check out my page, Intuitive Prospector. Make sure to turn on the notifications if you haven't already. I have recreated the page, so now I have top fans, so I will get to see who my top fans are. You actually get a badge uh, based on the interactions. And for those that share out the video to other pages um, or subscribes to my YouTube playlist, uh, at the end of the month, at March, uh, I do a uh, free 30-minute reading with you um, based on if you're chosen um, for subscribing or sharing out. Just did my 30-minute free reading with a, uh, 
awesome client uh, two days ago. Today's Monday, right? So Saturday. Yeah, I did a, a fun uh, Zoom video, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So um, if you want to share out, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it or get on the uh, subscription list uh, or become a top fan. Now, you can become a top fan of the Intuitive Prospector page based on uh, the videos that I have um, created here. Okay, so let's talk. Let's go prospecting. Let's do a little spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual goal. And how do we do that? First, we get into the magic of the moment. The mind... Like I was just telling you that Einstein talked about being that supercomputer. The mind is always, you know, having our mindset go to the past based on our memories or to our future based on our imagination. But what I would challenge you to do is to move into the magic of the moment. And we can talk about intuition, some of the things to look for. So I like to call it, I like to call, if you're in my development group, I have an online development group weekly. And I like to refer to you as a spiritual linguist. It's just like learning a language. If you, if you already are fluent in multi-languages... Uh, I speak a little bit. I speak um, uh, hablo espanol and uh, just a, just a little bit, a little bit of Italian because Italian and Spanish are very similar uh, in their structures and how to speak. Uh, but I speak English, so I speak three languages, not fluently, but I'm learning. I'm always learning how to, when I travel um, out of country, I always like to learn the basics, Where whether I'm in France and I can say, um, you know, um, oh, I don't know, say... Um, uh, Como allez-vous? Um, uh, S'il vous plaît, merci. Just the basics of hello, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Um, you know, just trying to f learn the basics. And so the same thing is very much as a spiritual linguist, understanding the intuition, the language of your soul, that, that, uh, that part, that intuitive mind being that sacred gift. And a lot of times, you know, most people, um, in doing this for a while now, um, I found that... Um, People don't always acknowledge this power that they have, this power uh, that they have within, that intuition of trust in your gut. Something feels out of whack. Something feels uh, out of character. This person just really rubs me the wrong way. This this place just doesn't feel right with my energy. And you know, a lot of times it's that intuition trying to get your attention, uh, and you develop a trust. It's it's like learning a language. You start to develop and learn your intuition because everybody's inner guidance is different and unique depending on how the soul communicates with you. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, people don't trust this power because they're always arguing with the ego mind, which is up here. And one of the things that the first things I have you do in my spiritual development group uh, is to name your ego. So you can identify that you really are having multiple thoughts uh, with the ego mind and your intuitive mind, which is connected to the heart. And we try to, um, you know, we don't trust our inner guidance a lot because we are looking for facts. We are looking for logic. And sometimes the facts and logic don't come into play until after the fact. A lot of what I do is pseudoscience as a psychic, as a spiritualist, as a medium, as a healer, as an inspirer. Uh, a lot of it's pseudoscience. It's, you can't prove it, but you can't disprove it because a lot of it's based on feelings and emotions. Uh, just like love. You can't always prove love. Love is an emotion. Love is a feeling. And so people a lot of times will push aside that, that inner guidance, that radar system, if you will. Same radar system that's at the airports that you know, detects planes uh, from a mile away, five miles away, ten miles away that you can't see with the physical eye. Your intuition, your chakra system, your energy system, your human energy system is very much the same way as the radar and detecting things that come into your awareness, come into your energy field that you may not agree with, um, that you may be like, well, I just don't feel comfortable, but then you still stick with it. So I teach on intuition of trusting your intuition because if you can't develop a relationship of trusting your intuition, how do you expect your intuition to work with you, your higher self, your higher guidance, your higher... Um, Awareness, if you will. So it's a it's a relationship on trust, but it's also becoming a spiritual linguist, understanding the language of your own soul. Now, some of you watching are very much down the path of understanding your your own language, uh, where you're at on your journey. Some of you are just beginning. Uh, some of you have probably a lot more insight than I ever will. I didn't uh, always uh, pay attention to my intuition or my awareness. But Eckhart Tolle teaches us that the greatest agent for change is your awareness. And Dr. Wayne Dyer reminds us when we start to change the way that we look at things, the things that we look at start to change. And that's all through intuition, awareness. So some of the things um, that you can pay attention, uh, some questions I'm going to give you to this morning to ask yourself about the language of the soul. To start um, going a little bit, you know, what is intuition? There are many types of intuition. Um, but I always say, let your, in, let your intuition guide you. 
Uh, a lot of the work that I do today is based on my trust of my intuition and the blending of the spiritual world and those that are no longer here in the physical world, but are still very much alive in the spiritual world, a world within a world, if you will, based on energy, frequency, vibration, love, memories, consciousness, thoughts, awareness. And I just let my intuition guide me. I always teach on believe it, see it, achieve it. A lot of people in society want to see it first. And there's a lot that we're not seeing, guys. If we were to break down this based on science of, of what a human can actually see based on a visual spectrum, uh, we're actually quite blind. Same thing with hearing. If we were to look at the, the human hearing capacity, at the ranges that we can hear, we're actually quite deaf. And that's where animals come in are very, you know, they see the world differently. They hear, they see in different bands of spectrums, they hear in different frequencies. Um, so if you, for those of you that have an animals, pay attention to your animals because a lot of times they'll pick up on, uh, on the, um, the things that are going around that are unseen. I always equate it to the wind. It's very much, we'd all agree that we see the effects of the wind on trees when the trees are moving, but we don't actually see the wind with our physical eye. And the spiritual world is very much the same way when they blend with us. Your intuition is very much the same way. It's the effects that you feel of your intuition, not necessarily seeing your intuition. Now, some of you may actually see your intuition. I don't want to discount that for those that are on, that are more into the enlightened uh, stage, more that more, some of you that have uh, been doing this work for several years. Um, so, um, you know, there's just a lot of different ways to really look at, at the intuition as language of soul. Whisper of the soul, the God spark of your soul. Um, you know, like I said, Albert Einstein referred to it as the, um, the sacred, uh, the sacred gift of understanding your intuition. And, um, you know, so I, this morning during meditation, it, it's just something that came up. It, it's time to inspire. It's time to, uh, get you on a, um, a way of understanding your intuition. Uh, you know, it's a sense of knowing how to act spontaneously um, without needing to know the whys. And a lot of times we limit ourselves because we, uh, just like a child, we're like, why, 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 why this, why this? Sometimes we just need uh, to act spontaneously to develop a, a relationship with our intuition, that language of our soul. So um, let me get another drink of coffee, take a nice deep breath, move into the magic of the moment of Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm going to be uh, on the air this Wednesday over on Inspired Living Radio talking about spiritual spring cleaning. So if you want to get some tips on how to spiritually spring clean now that we're in the month of March, uh, how to spring clean some of your uh, energy, some of your stuff, and then kind of break free and move into that spont spontaneity that I was just talking about. And just really having uh, you know, a, a go at understanding what a spiritual linguist is and understanding the language of your own soul. Because the language is different for everybody. Um, but the way that can come through, many different ways, through um, the clairs. If you understand the clairs, if you work with clairs, it's the clairs or clairvoyance, clairsentience. Uh, they're very much in tune with our own senses. See it, taste it, touch it, hear it, smell it. But it's going a little bit deeper into that radar system that I was talking about, that chakra system, working with energy, working with frequency, working with vibrations. Um, is this for everybody? No. But for those of us that have had a shakening that's caused this awakening, those of us that are on the spiritual path, uh, my own path as well as far as just through severe tragedy and trauma to put me on this path to be talking with you here today and teaching on that, inspiring you that um, as, I, and as I look out the window, you guys, this is what I love about doing the work that I do. There's a beautiful blue jay sitting there. So what I would do for spontane, spont just being spontaneous, as I look out my window on the fence, and, I, and if I could show you... I don't know if I could turn the camera around in time, but there's a, literally a big blue jay sitting on the fence. So I, as, oh, he's coming right up here to the window. Two of them, two blue jays. So awareness. I'm just real time sharing with you what a blue jay, blue jay means. So what would what would Mark do in this, in this sense um, as far as the intuitive prospector? I would look at that as a sign. I would actually get into my book that I have, um, Spiritual Totem uh, Guides, because nature interacts with us all the time. And if we're aware of that, and I would look up, what does a blue jay mean? Being that I just saw a blue jay. So I'm completely doing this. Uh, this wasn't planned, but just so you can see, there's the blue jay. Because I don't see blue jays very often here in Seattle. They are here, but I just don't see them. I'm not aware of them. Uh, and so the blue jay says, um, if the blue jay crosses your path, pay attention to nonverbal clues that tell you when someone is trying to deceive you. Hmm. Somebody out there is trying to deceive me based on me just looking at a blue jay. Uh, rather than just dabbling in the spiritual metaphysical realms, choose a path to explore and go as far as you can with it. 
Whatever the situation that has triggered some fear, attack it boldly, boldly and courageously. So that was just, that right there was just off the cuff, spon being spontaneous. I saw a blue jay. I looked up the meaning. I'm now going to be in my awareness and trusting my intuition that somebody might be actually working against me or deceiving me. It happens all the time, unfortunately, in the spiritual community. There's a lot of clicks. There's a lot of territorial stuff that goes on. I've seen it. I I don't have anything to do with that. That's just not where I'm at. That's not the spiritual path for me. Uh, there's enough hurt and uh, pain to go around for everybody to be able to step in and heal. But it's interesting that the Blue Jay caught my attention to where I look it up. So now it's on my radar, my chakra system, my awareness, and now I'll pay attention to that. And anything that comes up against me or there's any kind of you know, negativity, I will go against that boldly. Um, of course, being kind, caring, and compassionate in what I do in the golden circle and treating people how I like to be treated, but will not put up with people that are rude, uh, mean behind a keyboard, bullying, um, get into cliques or popular groups. I just don't, I don't work with that stuff. That's just not the spiritual path for me. And I do know some people out there that are, that are like that. And it's unfortunate. So it's just, you know, uh, sometimes it's just, uh, it, it's ignorance and uh, lack of growth and transformations and, and that, you know, we're all on a different path. But that was just a, a prime example of working with my own intuition. Blue Jay lands on a fence. It was enough to catch my attention. Looked it up. Now I'm aware. So what are some other things that we can pay attention to of, of intuition and, and how to develop that language of the soul. Like I said, I have a weekly development group. If you want a visitor's pass, just send me a private message or an email or subscribe to my playlist. Uh, get a hold of me. Just look for marklanehart.com or internet search intuitive prospector and you'll find me. Uh, because these are things that we look, these are things that we work on on a weekly basis. Spiritual development is something you get in what you put out and it's just like anything in life. Spiritual development is very much the same way. If you want to be get in shape and, and turn your body into something different by lifting weights and running, you got to get in the gym. No different on the spiritual path. The spiritual workout room is what I call it. SWR, spiritual workout room. Uh, something with meditation, something with um, practice, something with development. Uh, and getting into that spiritual workout room to help you develop the skills and your abilities that right for you. Not what I tell you what's right for you, but what you feel is right for you. So, how do we? How can we learn the language of our body? How can we fall in love with our imagination and our mind? How do we understand the language of signs and symbols? Just showed you a sign, a blue jay, simple blue jay. Some people wouldn't even pay attention to it enough to catch my attention. How do we acquire highly effective intuitive decision making techniques? How do we master tuning into our inner world where the absolute truth lies? Because there's a lot of stuff out there, guys, in the world. I'm seeing it right now uh, here in the United States from uh, political to religious to uh, social media. Everybody um, has an opinion. But I always say the only way out in this chaos is in. And how do we go within? How do we find that inner truth that lies within? Our discernment, our intuition, our awareness. Power of meditation, the power of exercise, the power of good rest and, and dream journaling. Uh, spiritual development groups. Being in a weekly development group that helps push you and challenge you and sharpen you. Um, how, do you how do you set the time to meet your higher self and to discern the language of your own soul? If you want to learn Spanish, you take a Spanish course or you get a Spanish tape or you get a Spanish book and you learn and you practice. Your intuition and spiritual development is very much the same way, guys. Um, how do you move into enjoy relaxing healing and insightful meditations? By carving out space. I always say take the time to disconnect so that you have the time to reconnect. A lot of us do not take that time to reconnect. We're go, 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 fast, 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 24-7 media, uh, the latest app. Uh, computers, technology, very much distractions. And one of the biggest ways that I find, and I teach on this and I do workshops, getting out into nature. Our first home, our, um, f our greatest teacher, our greatest healer, our greatest engineer, our greatest friend, full of power and energy. Um, and so if you want to um, you know, learn the intuition of your soul, then take some time to disconnect so you can start manifesting and putting time into that spiritual workout room to understand your own la language. Um, you know, discovering energetic connections in everyday life. And the reason I say everyday life is because I teach a lot on the magic in the moment. As a retired firefighter, several years in the U.S. Coast Guard, seeing all sorts of different tragedies. Uh, I've been on a um, major plane crash. I've done body recovery for suicides. I spent 13 years in the fire service, seeing motor vehicle accidents, seeing all sorts of different ways that people can move into the spirit world. And for me, it's a reminder that 
all you have is the moment that you are in right now. There is no guarantee for the future. And so when you start to have that mindset, knowing that death is a reality for all of us, it's what are you doing uh, to make the most of that moment? How are you living your life? Are you sweating the small stuff? Or are you really focusing on the, the important stuff? Something my, my wife and I just had a conversation this morning. I told her that she's like, for those of you that have seen Kung Fu Panda, um, which I love, I love Poe, uh, I told her that she is like Poe and I'm Master Sifu and she needs to focus. She needs to focus on what's right for her and her journey. Just like I need to focus on what's right for me and just like you need to focus on what's right for you. Focus, focus, focus. So I always think of Master Shifu. So if you've not seen Kung Fu Panda, check it out. It's fun. It's, uh, it's definitely about the power of meditation and going after the things that you desire and want in your life. Excuse me. <clears throat> so how are some things that I can help you this morning? And, and again, please make sure to subscribe. Turn on uh, the notifications. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, uh, turn on notifications for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. Come back at 8.30 because we'll be doing the prospecting Q&A after show where I'll actually have a direct conversation with you. Spiritual chats, readings, guidance, inspiration, mediumship, psychic. You never know. So uh, if there's somebody that you're wanting to connect with, a loved one, see what I can do. See if I can be the right medium for you. Um, because again, it's a reminder that I am not in control of the spirit world. I don't tell them when to show up. I work for them. They come close to me, and that's how we get an interaction in, the, in, in mediumship and getting inspiration and messages from the other side. So couple, ask yourself these following questions. See if this helps you with your intuition and your language of the soul, and if you want to understand the language of your soul. Um, think about somebody just out of the blue that you haven't heard from in a while. And all of a sudden, you bump into them, you get a phone call from them, you get a text from them, you maybe see them on the street, you may see them at a community event, but you've been thinking about them and you haven't heard from them, and all of a sudden, they pop into your awareness, they come into your energy, and you're like, hey, I was just thinking about you, or um, this happens all the time, I'll be driving, uh, and somebody will pop into my mind, and then they'll make me think, okay, what's going on, maybe I just send them a text, see how they're doing. Um, have you ever had a, a hunch, we always say trust your gut. And I've always been, I, when I started on my spiritual path, I was like, why do we say trust your gut? That didn't make from a, uh, a reasoning mindset, because again, with my background and my skill sets, very reasoning, very analytical, very logic, because I was always working to help other people save lives and you didn't have time to, you know, you had to be very logical in what you did. And so when I started on my spiritual path about 15 years ago, um, I, um, I asked myself, why do, we, why do people say trust your gut? Why am I trusting my stomach? It's a place for digestion. It's a place where my food goes. It made no sense to me. And as I started to transform and unfold my spiritual development, I realized that that area down there is also very energetic. It's very psychic. It's the place that you that that brought you into this this world. It's it's the um, the place that you connected in in the womb. That's where you and your mom were connected via the umbilical cord. And the belly button is also known um, in a lot of traditions. Um, known as the Montipura, the, the, the jewel on the hill, if you will. Um, very psychic, energetic area. That's where we get the butterflies. And so when you start to trust your gut and you get this hunch, your intuition is starting energetically to build up. And if you have this hunch about maybe a person, a place, or situation, and then after the fact, you're like, man, I really felt that disturbance in the force, if you will. I felt that, I'm um, sorry, I had to throw a Star Wars pun in there. Um, you felt that there was something that was off. I, I get this a lot about people. Um, I just, you know, no judgment on people. I just realized um, I don't always resonate with somebody. And I had this experience with somebody that um, had stayed here at my house um, as a guest. And I just, my intuition was a little off um, with this person. And long story short, um, my intuition served me right. And I'm no longer uh, friends with this person. And uh, just really, you know, send them the best, but don't want anything to do with them. And so I, I pay attention to that. And, I, and it, was a, it was a hunch. It was my gut was telling me to trust that and, and things unfolded after the fact. And, um, you know, if, if there's somebody that you know that you like spot on, somebody you don't like, and you don't even know this person. I mean, the, 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 the cover is not the book, right? Don't judge a book by its covers, what my grandma always used to tell me. But sometimes you just know that you don't need to be around that person. It's trusting your intuition that this person, and I felt this um, months ago, and now the realization is I, my intuition was right. So, um, you know, if you've ever been in a certain situation and you knew the outcome, that's trusting your intuition. Um, do, for those of you watching, do you have vivid or, or pro, uh, uh, prophetic dreams? I do all the time. Sometimes I wake up and my dreams are so real and I write them down. 
And prophecy is not always good stuff either, guys. I found that some of the stuff that I see is like, is it my own consciousness or is it about stuff that's about to happen? Uh, do coincidences and synchronicities happen all the time? I've got a stack of dimes here because I find dimes. I'll just show you because they're sitting here right here. I find dimes all the time. Not pennies, dimes or quarters from my brothers because both my brothers are in the spirit world. And I find them usually before an event. I'll find them out on a hike. I'll find them uh, all over the place. And I just now laugh because it's a symbol and a sign that they are let me know that they walk with me on this path. Um, just trying to think. Um, you know, your intuition is speaking to you always. Um, it's just most of the time we're not aware of it. So what I would challenge you today is to pay attention to something, even in your own space where you're at right now. Look around your space and pay attention to something maybe that you haven't noticed and it's been there the whole time. Um, you know, I do this all the time because I'm surrounded by other people's thoughts that have come into my reality. And I always try to just pay attention to my space and my awareness of that space. Um, so, you know, intuition is fun. You can have fun with this. It's not anything to be feared. Uh, it's something that can really help you go deeper into your spiritual journey. It can help you to... Um, make better decisions uh, about people, about uh, careers, about relationships, about houses, about locations, about an upcoming trip. I mean, it, it, it's, it goes on and on and on. And um, this morning, I just wanted to share with you uh, some ways of paying attention to, like I said, be spontaneous, just like I did with the Blue Jay just now. Um, uh, what you're going to see in the prospecting Q&A after show, uh, when we come back here, um, I'm going to end here in just a few minutes. And this is going to premiere over on my YouTube channel. So make sure to get on my YouTube channel and subscribe to that or become a top fan. I now have the page set up to, to recognize all my top fans so I can call you out on the page. Love, I love my spiritual prospectors and people that have been with me for uh, no, two seasons now, Metaphysical Mocha. And some of you have been with me for four seasons of Inspired Living Radio. So I greatly appreciate you, um, you know, and your friendship. And I hope that I help you and inspire you and, and, and point you in the right direction at least because life is short. Uh, you know, my work as a psychic and spiritual medium is not just about connecting to the other world and bringing message of evidence and love from those that have passed on, but to also get you living again and look at life with a different set of eyes. Very much what I had to do with my own tragedy and to live again and work through depression and work through PTSD, to work through some of the stuff that trauma and tragedy brings into our lives, the grieving process, working with people as a counselor to work through the grieving process. And of course, get back to living life because life is short. That's why my tagline is dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. Um, and, I, and I dare you to do that. So if, you're, if you want to go deeper with your intuition, if you want to learn the language of your soul, um, like I said, be spontaneous, believe it, see it, achieve it. Um, spirits, the spirit world, those that, that we have lost speak to us through our intuition. Uh, they, the animals are very intuitive. Uh, there's just a lot of sign, symbols, synergy, and synchronistic events that I talk about all the time. I will uh, try to put one of my past shows here on the link if I can get to it in time because I'm going to be talking about spiritual spring cleaning for this Wednesday and also um, the intuition, uh, the language of the soul. So I'm going to end there. I just want to uh, say thank you for uh, hanging out with me today. I hope you have a fabulous week and I hope that you trust your intuition and you uh, open up your awareness there's many different things that you can do. The first and for foremost is uh, uh, come through the connection of your own intuition through the power of breath, stilling the mind. Uh, you can do that through spont being spontaneous. Uh, you can do that through uh, writing, gardening, um, getting out and exercising, your dreams. I mean, there's just a lot of different ways to connect to your intuition. And uh, I'll be talking about this here in the prospecting Q&A after show that starts right now now. So have a great rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out. I'll be back here in about 30 seconds for the prospecting Q&A after show. Make sure to share out, subscribe, like, uh, and most importantly, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live until our next soul adventure together. I'll see you next time. Until then, be kind, caring, and compassionate. Namaste.